I will show you footage from inside the scope, what you will actually see if you look and try to find Polaris, the North Star, with this little uh, illuminator right here that illuminates the reticle in red color so you can better see the markings inside the scope and also the stars. Hi there and welcome to another video. Today, today we are going on an adventure again. I have all of my astrophotography gear right here with me in my car and we are going to a very cool location. There is this hill and there is this awesome view over the southern horizon over some mountains down south which is exactly where the Milky Way will be. We are going to take some shots of the Milky Way and maybe some deep sky astrophotography like row of Yucas, maybe I can catch the comet Neowise still, but I'm not exactly sure if it will be visible from that vantage point. So basically this is the plan for tonight. The green cone is showing you my angle of view. As you can see, I can move this around and this green stuff down below right here is showing me the Milky Way. And if I go into the viewfinder VR view, you can basically see my framing against the landscape. And as you can see, whoops, I have some error here, no worries. So as you can see, here is the landscape and here's the Milky Way right up there with the core of the Milky Way where the green dot is. So the framing looks amazing. We're gonna go there and basically the purpose of this video is to show you guys every step of the way in my process and the setup and how I shoot everything, how I set everything up, how I pick my camera settings, how I set up my astro tracker because we are going to be using the Skywatcher Star Adventure tonight. So I'm going to show you everything right there in the location because it's one thing to talk about this stuff sitting behind a desk and you know doing all the theory and I have a bunch of videos already on my channel about what camera settings to use for astrophotography, how to pick your location, how to pick your time, how to set up the astro tracker, how to polar align, how to set up everything up and if you haven't seen those videos their links will be down below in the description like I mentioned before but Another thing completely is to just go out into the field and do it yourself when it's cold, when it's dark and you have to find all the knobs, you have to fine tune everything, find the correct settings and I'm going to show you exactly that. I'm going to show you what I see behind the camera, what I see on the back of the LCD of my camera so you will know for yourself what to actually expect if you go out and do it yourself. So well, let's go, we have an hour driving before me so I should really get going. So yeah, see you at the location. we are about halfway through so we still have like 30 minutes of driving we have just started the astronomical twilight so hopefully by the time that the dark night actually starts I will be all set up in the location it's going smoothly as far as I can see there are no clouds in the sky not a single cloud so the conditions are perfect I cannot wait to start photographing the sky tonight I have been waiting for like two months or something like this because we had white nights in Poland in, in June and now it's like mid-July so finally dark nights returned and I'm so excited I can't wait to start shooting the night sky again all right let's do some more driving Right, we have arrived at the location and it is pretty incredible and pretty amazing there is nobody here beside me on the parking lot the sky is clear the view is just incredible so let's go outside let's set everything up and let me walk you through the entire process of how exactly do i set everything up set my camera settings my focus and everything you can see the stuff at the back of the camera my test shots and everything so yeah no time to waste let's go Guys, I don't know if you can see this, but this is pretty amazing. I'm shooting right now at like 25,000 ISO and I can clearly see the sky with my own eyes. Right here in the middle, there's Jupiter and I think there's Saturn on the left right here. It's pretty incredible. This location is amazing. All right, so I took all the stuff out of my car. I have my tracker right here in this awesome Pelican case. So let me just unpack everything assemble everything and let's start doing the polar alignment on Polaris which is right here. Let's do it. All 
Alright, so right now the entire tracker is already set up. You have the tripod here, you have a hook with some weight. Right here I just hang my backpack in order to provide just more push to the ground so the entire setup is more sturdy. And then right here you can see that I am properly leveled. Yep, it's leveled. Then I have dialed in my uh, my latitude here on this on this part, and I have also dialed in my polar alignment. And I didn't go in depth about how to set up the every part of the adventure right here because I actually have a separate video where I explain every knob, every little uh, lever that you can pull, and every thing that you need to set up here in order to be properly aligned. But what I wanted to show you right now is that what you can actually see through this polar scope because right here there is a polar scope and you need to look through the North Celestial Pole on the North Hemisphere where I am currently and I will show you footage from inside the scope what you will actually see if you look and try to find Polaris the North Star with this little uh, illuminator right here that illuminates the reticle in red color so you can better see the markings inside the scope and also the stars. Alright guys, I don't know if you can see this, I really wanted to show you the footage of inside the scope. I am recording this on my phone but hopefully you can see between the 9 and 0 there is Polaris placed exactly where it should be, somewhere on this inner ring inside the scope. This is what you will see through the scope if you have the illuminator attached to the tracker. And this is how you make sure that you are properly polar aligned on the North Celestial Pole when you see Polaris exactly on this inner circle where it should be if you checked in the app beforehand. Alright, so now we can take off this reticle illuminator and we can mount here our camera and start shooting. So uh, let's do that. Alright, so my camera is mounted here. As you can see, I'm using this wide angle attachment. Then I have a ball head and then of course my camera. And one cool thing I wanted to show you, this is the app I was showing you before. This is Planet. And right now I can go back here and I can actually go to this AR view, which is augmented reality. I couldn't show this to you before because I need to be at the location in order to show it. So right now if I open AR, I can actually see, look at the app, I can actually see, you know, where the Milky Way is and where I should point my camera in order to see the Milky Way. You can see it is straight up here. Actually, my time is a little bit off. So let's adjust it. This is five past midnight, somewhere around here. All right, so the Milky Way is here. So I need to turn my camera to face this direction. So yeah, uh, let's do that. Okay, so I have my camera pointed roughly at the spot where I needed it to point. And right here, the first thing that I need to do after uh, framing up preliminary, as you can see, I am pretty much level, so this is okay. Yeah, let's go back with the AF point. And right now, I need to actually focus on the stars. So in order to do that, I am flipping my lens to manual. I already have, uh, I already have manual right here, manual focus, obviously. And right now, because I'm using the Canon EF 24 millimeters, I actually have the USC motor on this lens, so I can see where I need to turn this ring in order to be focused at infinity, roughly. And by the way, I actually have a review of this lens. This is one of my favorite lenses of all time from Canon. You can check it out on my channel. The link will be in the description after you're done with this video. So right here, if I need to focus, I actually turn it all the way to infinity, but a common misconception is that if you turn all the way to infinity, you are focused at infinity. And the truth is that in most lenses, the infinity focus is actually a little bit before that, you know, because if the manufacturing is not 100% accurate, you can always, you know, go back and forth one millimeter or something and tweak it and find the actual infinite. So that's why infinite is not, you know, when it's turned all the way, so right now, in order to see where the infinite actually is, I'm just zooming in here. I'm just zooming into live view. And right here, as you can see, okay, I have something here. And now I am just turning slightly the focus ring. I'm just turning and I am checking what am I seeing here. And when I'm focused correctly, the star, this point that I'm seeing here at the back of the LCD, will have as small diameter as possible. So somewhere around here, I think I am focused perfectly. So this is basically how you find focus. And right now we can uh, go back. Okay, so this is our view. And as you can see the framing, I'm gonna point it upwards a little bit. So something like this. 
Okay, let's tighten this. This is my framing, and now I need to actually find my exposure settings. And in order to do that, what I am doing is that I will be shooting on the star tracker so I can pull off a shutter speed of around 4 minutes. I think 4 minutes would be good for this wide angle 24mm shot on this full frame camera. So what I actually need to do is I need to find the correct ISO because I am using the aperture of f3.5. This lens opens up to f2.8 but if I stop it down a little bit I am ensuring that I have the best possible optical performance in this lens. So 3.5 is a good spot on this actual lens. And then right here I have the 15 seconds of shutter speed and that is because I don't want to wait 4 minutes for each test shot that I take in order to find the correct ISO. So I have just reduced the speed, reduced the duration of the exposure from, from 4 minutes to 15 seconds and this is exactly 4 stops. So now if I find out the correct ISO then if I bump the shutter speed from 15 seconds to 4 minutes then I can reduce the ISO by exactly four stops and then I will have a perfect exposure. So let's take some test shots. All right, so after taking the first shot, actually it looks pretty awesome. As you can see, there's the strip of the Milky Way right here in the middle. I'm sorry, I'm shooting on an iPhone and it keeps adjusting exposure. And if I go to info and actually check out the histogram, as you can see, the histogram looks pretty good. I don't want to push it more towards the right because I would be reducing the overall brightness of the image anyway and if I want to I can just increase the brightness if I want to but I think this brightness looks pretty good so what I have right here is ISO 6400 and 15 seconds shutter speed so right now if I go to four minutes of shutter speed that means that I need to go down with the ISO bar four stops so 3200 1600 this is two stops 800 400 so four minutes and 400 ISO Let's try that. Okay, so in order to set four minutes of shutter speed, I actually need to go to bulb mode on this camera, which is the Canon EOS R. Then I go to bulb, and right here from the menu, I can actually go to, uh, I think it's called bulb timer. Where is it? Yeah, it's bulb timer. Let's enable that. Let's go to more details, and let's set four minutes. Okay, wait a minute. Info. Yes, I have four minutes right here. And let's go down with the ISO to 400, like I mentioned. And let's take a test shot. All right, and the four minutes is up. And as you can see, the image looks pretty much the same as before, but it is way cleaner because I was using now 400 ISO instead of 6400. And if you look closely, if I zoom in here, you can see the ground is actually blurry. And that is because I'm using a tracker, so my camera is rotating as the sky is rotating, but the ground is stationary, so the ground is blurry, but the sky is tech sharp, which is exactly what we want. So now, the last piece of the puzzle is to actually plug in right here an external intervalometer and take a couple of those shots so we can stack them together in post-production in order to get the best possible quality. So yeah, let's plug in the intervalometer. All right, so I have my intervalometer right here. It is plugged into the camera, as you can see, and I have this little rig in order to hold it in place on the camera so it doesn't go uh, in the way of the tracker. And for the rig, I'm just using a, this is a super clamp from small rig and an aperture ball head. I will have links to all these little accessories down below in the description of this video, so you can check it out for yourself and pick them up as you want. So what we need to do right now is that we need to set we need to set it to interval of 4 minutes and 10 seconds because I want to give it like 10 seconds of gap between the shots so I don't miss any shots and then I'm going to take I think 6 shots for this stack for 4 minutes exposures at ISO 400 should be plenty. So uh, yeah, I guess let's just hit play and let's start shooting. Let's just sit on the on the chair and enjoy the night. And let's wait until the camera is finished. Okay, I have taken my images. Uh, I have actually settled for four images for the sky and one image for the ground. And those are the sky exposures, as you can see, one, two, three, and four. The ground is sort of moving, but the sky is stationary. And the last shot is the ground shot. And for that, as you can see, I have just turned off the tracker. So I have literally, I have left everything like this. 
but I just switched this from celestial tracking to off. And then I have taken this shot, which is the same exact camera settings, but now as you can see that the ground is sharp, but the sky is blurry, and this is exactly the exposure that I will need later on post-production in order to create a final blend and a final photo. All right, I'm gonna switch the lens. I'm gonna take some shots with a 15 millimeters focal lens or something like this, and then uh, I'll see you back in the car. See you in a minute. All right, and I am back in the car. Everything is packed in the trunk, ready to go, ready to go back home. Honestly, I am pretty tired. It's pretty late into the night, so I'm just gonna head back home and tomorrow morning I'm gonna edit those files. But right now, at the very end of this video, I'm going to show the final results of both of these images. One of them taken with the 24 millimeters focal length and the other one taken with 15 millimeters focal length. I'm not going to go through the post-processing right here because I already have a bunch of tutorials about that. You can check the whole playlist uh, right here if you want to check it out. So definitely uh, you know, look for the videos of my channel. I have a bunch of astrophotography related tutorials already. Give this video a like if you learned something new. Hopefully if you liked this video, give it a like. I would really appreciate that. And also consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. I post a lot of astrophotography related contents and also other stuff related to cameras like you know filmmaking, photography in general, etc. So definitely consider subscribing. I pretty much upload new video every single week. But yeah, that's it for now. I gotta head back home. I gotta go to bed and see you next time, hopefully. Bye bye. <laughs>